Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Race Face Driver Updates. I'm Brittany Lung. Let's get started with our Race Face Drivers. Nearly all saw action this weekend. We start with the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series race at Pocono Raceway. The tricky triangle was that and more to both Anthony Alfredo and Sheldon Creed. Anthony was taken out on lap one when the lead group got together. He tried to avoid an impatient Stuart Friesen by going in between him and the wall. That didn't work out very well as the 52 truck slid up and completely tore off the entire left side of the Steel Smith Toyota, ending his day almost before it got started. Up next for Anthony is the Michigan International Speedway on August 10th. Sheldon Creed started the race in fifth and finished second in stage one. Early in stage two, he made contact with the wall after contact with the number 51 truck. The team made repairs and kept Sheldon on track until an oil leak ended their day with a 25th place finish. Sheldon sits ninth in points heading into Thursday night's race on the dirt at Eldora Speedway. Sam Mayer was at Iowa Speedway for the NASCAR K&N Pro Series Casey's General Store 150 that included drivers from both the West and the East Series. Sam started the weekend off by winning the pole. Sam led the field to the green flag and stayed there most of the race, leading all but eight laps en route to his second victory of this year, the first coming earlier at Bristol Motor Speedway. Up next for Sam, NASCAR's K&N Pro Series at the road course at Watkins Glen. Joey East was pulling double duty at Madeira Speedway over the weekend, competing in both the 5150 Junior Late Model Series and the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series. The temperatures were above 100 degrees, but Joey was on fire, winning the Junior Late Model race, his third win in six starts, and he hasn't finished outside the top three in six starts. Joey didn't have much time to regroup before taking the green flag for the Nut Up Pro Late Model race, where he qualified fourth and finished third. Joey will pull double duty again on August 24th at Madeira. Race face driver Joe Valento was at Madison International Speedway in Oregon, Wisconsin for his fifth start in the Midwest Truck Series. Joe qualified 13th. He won his heat race and started P12 for the feature due to the invert. A race that saw several cautions made it difficult for Joe to advance because his truck took a few laps to come in, but still managed to work his way to the front and finished fourth, his third top five finish in a row. Up next for Joe, August 8th at State Park Speedway. Jesse Love had two nights of racing in the Power Eye National Midgets with his KKM team. First, the great news, no rain, as both nights were rescheduled from earlier rainouts in June. Night one was at Belclair Speedway, where Jesse was fourth in hot laps and finished third in his heat. Jesse started in 12th for the feature, but got clipped by another car, bending his axle and tie rod, but still managed a 12th place finish. Now on to night two, where the series moved to Macon Speedway. Jesse finished third in his heat race, where he was credited with the fastest lap of the race. On to the feature, where he started ninth and worked his way up to fifth, but the track turned into a one-groove track, and the only way to pass was by pulling a slide job. With not a lot of experience on a track like this, he finished 12th, but said after the race, I learned a lot and I will be ready next time. Up next for Jesse, Power Eye Midgets, August 2nd and 3rd in Peavely, Missouri. Adam Lemke was back behind the wheel of his number 98 Junior Motorsport Chevrolet at Hickory Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Wheelin' All-American Series in preparation for next week's Cars Tour Throwback 276. Adam qualified seventh and ran in the top 10 all night in a caution-free race. 80 green laps at Hickory, that might be a first. Adam was going for third with five to go, but came up inches short, finishing fourth. Next week, as we said, one of the most anticipated Cars Tour races of the year, the Throwback 276 at Hickory Motor Speedway. Connor Mozak was also at Hickory Motor Speedway in his number 18 Nick Taylor NASCAR Wheelin' All-American Series late model. Connor qualified eighth and finished eighth in the 80 lap feature. Up next for Connor, he will be back at Hickory on August 10th. We now move to our Race Face Next drivers. Race Face Next drivers Jake Bowman and Jaden Walbridge were both competing in round six 
of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series at Madeira Speedway on Saturday. Jake qualified six, ran in the top 10 all night, and brought home a fifth place finish. Jaden was super fast and set on the pole with a fast time of 1523 and was able to bring home a fourth place finish. Both drivers will be back at Madeira on August 24th for round seven of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Jake Bowman also competed in the Bojangle Summer Shootout last Tuesday night at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Jake qualified second and transferred directly into the feature race. He ran in the top five for the majority of the race before contact with another car in a wet track caused him to spin out, but Jake managed to finish 11th in the main event. William Cox had an awesome day at Charlotte Motor Speedway last Tuesday night in the Bojangle Summer Shootout competing in the Young Lions division. Will qualified 11th. He started on the pole for his heat race and led every lap to bring home the win. Will had to start the 25 lap feature in 11th place and all the drivers had to deal with a wet track, but Will fought his way back to a solid fifth place finish. Both Jake and Will are racing as we speak at the Bojangle Summer Shootout Finale. Good luck guys. Bryce Bazanson was at Evergreen Speedway in Monroe, Washington for the NASCAR Whelan All-American Late Model Series Central Welding 125. Bryce qualified 13th. Even though it wasn't his best starting position of the year, it was his fastest time of the year at Evergreen. He started the race in 13th and moved up to 9th. Then on a restart, passed a couple of cars putting him in 7th before getting hit hard in the rear and sending him sideways only to be collected by the same car, tearing off his front fender and part of the hood. For the next 100 laps, he fought an ill-handling car, but managed a 13th place finish. Up next for Bryce, Wenatchee Valley Super Oval on August 10th. Cassidy Hines was at El Paso County Raceway with her 600 micro sprint with no wing this week. She took the green flag sixth, but her night ended quickly as she tangled with another car getting airborne and when she landed, something broke in the steering, ending her night. Up next, Pro Truck at Colorado National Speedway on August 3rd. All of us here at Race Face would like to wish Cassidy a happy 16th birthday. Justice and Kobe Sokol were also at El Paso County Raceway in their non-winged 600 micro sprints. The rain played a big part in the night schedule as the heat races were canceled and all drivers were transferred directly into the feature race. Let's start with Colby, who had an engine issue in hot laps and was unable to make the start in the feature. Justice, who is the only restricted car in the field, started 12th and moved through the field to finish 7th. Up next for the Red Army I-76 Speedway in Fort Morgan, Colorado on August 3rd. Grant Thompson was pulling double duty over the weekend. First we go to Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, Florida, where Grant qualified 2nd but had to start 5th with the invert. He ran in the top five all night and finished second. On night two, we go to Grant's home track in Mobile International Speedway. Grant qualified first, started on the pole for his heat race, and led every lap for the win. Now on to the feature race where he had to start fourth. He got hung up on the outside and was shuffled to the back. After gaining his composure, he started his march to the front and with five laps to go, took over the lead and hung on to win his second race of the year at Mobile. Bubba Gale, Grant said this one was for you. Up next for Grant, back at Mobile on August 10th. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. Remember, if you have missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite Race Face Drivers. Get out there and have a great race week. I'm Brittany Lung. Thanks for watching.